Sponsored display is one of the most underutilized tools when it comes to advertising on Amazon. And in this video, I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step -step what is sponsored display, how to use it, and a screen share of exactly how to set it up. Amazon advertising helps you reach customers in all different points of their journey. If you're using sponsored products, you might only be reaching them at the point where they're ready to convert. So sponsored products is when they type in a keyword and they're looking at the search results or if they're already on a product detail page. But there's other points where you can reach them as well. And if you're not using sponsored display, you could be missing out on other points of the journey where customers are shopping. So what's sponsored display? Now, sponsored display is advertising that shows around the page on Amazon. So it shows on like that top bar or those sidebars or sometimes in the buy box. And it's basically placements outside of the regular search results where you see like sponsored products. And it's not that headline search ad or the video ad that's sponsored brand. And one of the beautiful things of sponsored display is it uses audience targeting. So instead of actually just targeting keywords or products, it follows people around. So you can target certain audiences and it will follow them around to different pages. And one of the really cool things about sponsored display is it targets people on and off of Amazon. So places like Pinterest and Buzzfeed and thousands of other pages and apps. And if you ask me, sponsored display has two really cool advantages. Number one is audiences, right? So instead of just going after keywords, it's going after people, audiences, and you can build different audiences based on different things. So people who viewed your product in the last 30 days or 60 days, or people who purchase your product. You can also do lookalike audiences as well. And the other one is contextual targeting. Contextual targeting allows you to target product detail pages and categories. It's kind of like Amazon's auto campaigns and it works really well to find people at the point of their conversion. And sponsored display campaigns are just like sponsored product campaigns. They're very easy to set up. It doesn't take that long. And here's the incredible thing that Amazon did. Usually display campaigns require custom creatives, but with Amazon, you can literally just use the product detail page. So it will pull your main image and your title and your reviews and all that kind of stuff and automatically configure it and display it in all these different places. So you don't need any custom creatives. You don't need a designer. You don't need anything. All right, let's jump right in the computer and I'm gonna show you exactly how to set it up. All right, guys, so we're in Seller Central. I'm gonna click here on the menu, go to Advertising, Campaign Manager. As usual, we're gonna click here to create a campaign. Now you can see all of our campaign types here. Here's Sponsor Display. And actually, if you click here, you'll see where it's advertising. You see here the top bar, right here, another bar. You know, on the side, this looks like it's other websites. This looks like it's Amazon. So we're gonna click here, Continue. Now let me walk you step by step how to create the campaign. So first of all, we need a campaign name. As usual, I like to start with the product code. I'm gonna put the type of campaign, so it's a sponsored display campaign. And then from there, I wanna add other things that are relevant to the campaign. So as I build this, let's say I'm gonna do conversions. So I'm gonna do CV, image, IM. You know, let's do product detail page, so PDP. And then the targeting. So it's gonna be conversion, product detail page, image. And then in terms of targeting, I'm gonna walk you through the different targeting, but could be categories, could be audiences, targeting. So I'll walk through all of that in a second, but just make sure that as you name these campaigns, you name them in a way that you understand exactly what they are. Next, I always recommend that you place campaigns in a portfolio. So in this case, I'll put it in the unflavored portfolio because it's the unflavored version. Start date today, end date, no end date. Daily budget, I don't recommend anything under $100. Anything under that, I don't really see that good of performance. Sometimes it throttles the performance. With the ad group name, I'm basically gonna copy paste the campaign name. So once it's done and completed, once I've created the entire campaign, I'll then put the names for both. Now, when it comes to optimization strategy, whether it's reach, page visits, or conversions, 99% of the time we wanna choose conversions because at the end of the day, our goal is to actually convert. With page visits, we're just you know getting traction. It, both of them are CPC model, which means you're gonna get charged per click. However, with the reach, you get charged only per view. So for every thousand viewable impressions. In this case, you know, reach might be good for you if you're like looking for awareness. Uh, you wanna reach as many people as possible. Page visits, if you're just trying to drive as many people as possible to the listing. And sometimes this is good when you have a lot of variations because Amazon will optimize for conversions for a single child variation. However, if you do page visits, it'll just send as many people to the page as possible. And then from there, they'll choose the variation that they like the most. So it's worth testing both. However, 99% of the time I choose conversions because I'm looking for sales. With the ad format, you have two different options. So if you're going to a product detail page, you can do image or video. And in this case, if you're going to an Amazon store, you can also do image or video. Image is just gonna be still images. Videos is gonna be, you know, videos that are playing, uh, you know, across different places. Now, 
In this case, if I'm going to a product detail page, I can eventually like choose which product I want to advertise and it will send it to that detail page. With Amazon stores, it's just gonna send it to the store and I can choose different sub pages in that store. So I can choose, you know, why hard work or the unflavored or the products page, whatever it is. Obviously get creative with that if you have different pages. Next, targeting. So there's two different types of targeting. Contextual targeting, where you can target categories and products or audiences. Contextual is pretty cool, right? Because you can choose a category and you can refine that category. So let's say in this case, we're doing electrolytes and I can see electrolyte supplements here. Wait, this is for horse. Uh, let's let's uh, do for uh, people. So this right here is for people and, and I can refine it and I can say, okay, I wanna target anything that is at least $33 and has three stars or less. So there's 90 to 150 products that I can target right now and I can just click add. Um, I'm gonna delete this old one. So uh, this is what I'm targeting and it asked me for a bid. I can just put a, a dollar default bid. I like to start anywhere, dollar, and then work my way up if needed. And then individual products. So this is where I can actually like target actual ASINs. I like to test different things. So at the end of the day, I don't know what's gonna work. I can all, only like create hypotheses and say, you know, this might work, that might work. So at the end of the day, what I'm trying to do is test as many things as possible, test as many categories as possible, uh, test different products. I don't recommend going over five products here because anything more than that, I notice that it's not getting enough budget. Next, let's talk about audiences. This is actually my favorite. Now with audiences, you can actually choose locations. So you can go geo-targeting. This is powerful, but in this case, I'm not gonna do anything with locations. Let's talk about the different audiences available. So there's Amazon audiences, there's views, and there's purchases. So with Amazon audiences, this is what you get. You can have lifestyle, and it'll tell you like what the different parts of lifestyle are. So you can pick any one of these. And then we have interests and in, in, uh, categories. So this is what they're interested in. There's a lot here to, to go off of. So you can literally just go through all of these different categories and add what you want as an audience. And again, like I said, this is all testing. Uh, next you have like in market. So in market is actually one of the very powerful ones where they might be in the market for a specific product, like in market for electrolytes or in market for, you know, health products. And this, you know, sometimes performs very well for me. Again, all of these we're gonna have to test. Let's go back to the audiences. Views is one that I really like, and this is views of certain categories. So I can go in and I could create people who viewed a certain uh, category, and I could say people who viewed it in the last seven days, 14 days, 30 days, 60 days. So if you've, they viewed it in the last seven days, means that they're very interested in the thing. Or I could go views in the last 90 days. This is useful for when I'm doing complementary products. So, look, you know, I'm doing an electrolyte and let's say like anyone who viewed keto products in the last 90 days, they're definitely relevant to my market because keto people need electrolytes. Now, the one that I like the most most is purchases. This is based on people who purchased uh, my product. So I can go in and I can actually target people who have purchased products or have purchased my products. And this is really powerful, right? Because I can literally go and say, okay, I want to target people uh, who have purchased my product or viewed my product in the last 30 days or purchased complementary products in the last 30 days. And this is pretty cool. All right, let's keep moving guys. Add group name. We already mentioned that. Now here is where you add the creative. So you have three things that you need to add here. You can add a video if you want, if we're doing video, right? Like, so if we go up here, if we're doing video, you need to add the video. You need to have a logo and you need to add a headline. So headline right here, 50 characters, and say America's favorite hydration. So America's favorite hydration, you know, put the video right here. And you can see if we wanna do images, so I'm gonna choose images, and right here, logo, headline, and then I can add an image. So in this case, add a custom image, and I could choose from creative assets that I've already uploaded to Amazon, or do a specific image. And as you can see here, if I'm choosing from my creative assets, I have my asset library. And this is where I've uploaded a lot of different creatives that I've made and that I've added. You can see like there's all these different uh, creatives. Like look at this one, look at this one, look at this one. Pretty cool. And this will show you right here all of the different sizes. So it's nice because like, let me show you what I would do. If I would do, you know, choose a creative asset. Let's say, oh, let's do like this one, for example. It will automatically show you what it's gonna look like in all of those different assets. So it looks like this, looks like this. So if there's anyone that like doesn't make any sense, you'll know you'll know about it right away. So it says here image dimensions should be 1200 by 628 or larger. You know, you can tell like when it doesn't make sense, when it's not like, you know, optimized correctly. Anyways, 
you guys get the gist. This is the specs. It needs to be 1200 by 628 or larger. And then no text, graphics, or logo added to the image. It just needs to be regular images. And then from there, I'm just gonna click launch campaigns and we're off to the races. So again, to summarize, you know, besides campaign names, you need conversions, probably targets. That's the most important one. In my opinion, that's the one that's gonna get you the most sales. You could do an image or a video. You could target going to the stores or to the product detail pages. Test both guys. And that's it guys, launch the campaigns and we're off to the races. All right guys, to wrap this up, hopefully this was a useful tutorial. I love using sponsored display. I like to have a comprehensive advertising strategy. So not just sponsored products, but also sponsored brand and sponsored display. And I like to use them in different ways. Now, the thing with sponsored display is I always like to have it running retargeting. So I'm constantly retargeting people. Contextual is nice and I use it when I'm trying to scale, but at a base level, I'm always using retargeting and I usually have very good ROAS with that. So if I were you on top of sponsored products, Products advertising, I would definitely have sponsored display at least at a base level retargeting running. And if you want to learn more about sponsored display, click the link in the description. I left a link for you guys to check it out. Now, if you want to learn how to optimize your ads in a very efficient way, I did another video here, which I highly recommend that you guys check out. Thank you to Amazon ads for all their support and their tools and for supporting this video. And I'll see you guys in the next video.